Ross and Rachel, Carrie and Big, Noah and Allie from the movie The Notebook. Fictional couples that we idolize that probably would not have survived in real life. Yes, they all had incredible stories that stood the test of time, but they also all had dramatic beginnings, middles, and in the end, we were led to believe that they lived happily ever after. We're so caught up in the allure of these kinds of turbulent relationships, where the characters are seen as risky, passionate, dramatic, aloof, and elusive. It's chemical, complicated, the passion is overflowing, and the lines between possession and desire are blurred. So many of us yearn for that relationship spark. It's a spark that we see in the notebook when Noah looks at Allie and says, when I see something that I like, well, I go crazy for it. There's a name for these kinds of bonds, and no, it's not twin flame or soulmate. It's called the anxious avoidant dynamic, and it's a dynamic that is fueled by our need to live out our fairy tale endings. That there's this fantasy person, and when we meet them, they'll make us want to fight for love. Now, if love is a cause worth fighting for, then anxious and avoidant types do see romance as a battlefield. That is what is at the core of their dynamic. They have similar insecurities and yet struggle to see eye to eye. So they challenge each other in surprising ways, only so that at the end of the day, when the stakes are really high, they have a deep urge for each of them to come out on top or win. Some people describe this as a love that is hard to hold, but also difficult to let go of. Some of you may just call it chemistry. Now, if you're more anxious, you probably relate to characters like Carrie Bradshaw. You want a big kind of love. You want what you want and you will do anything, even suffer in order to get it. Maybe you see yourself as more avoidant, like James Bond, for example. You don't have time for all this emotional stuff. You have to go to work and save the world. Or maybe you're this third person where you can see yourself in both characters depending on the context and who you're with. Me on my end, once upon a time, I used to really relate to Carrie. And I'd avoid an ex. And whenever we would struggle or be in an argument, the first thought that always came up to me was, we haven't earned his love just yet. We need to try harder. So the biggest lesson that I learned in my relationship journey was that being labeled as anxious or avoidant was less about what I said or didn't say. It was more about my mindset when it came to connecting with others. So ask yourself, when you're navigating your relationships, are you letting your fear lead you or is it your intuition? And what's the difference? Are you the kind of person who has this cool girl, cool guy exterior but on the inside, you're spiraling and overthinking every move that you are about to make. Or are you the kind of person who likes to spend your weekends with someone, meet their family and friends, only to then avoid the what are we talk? Here's a funny story about that. So a few months ago, I was walking around my Brooklyn neighborhood and I overheard someone turn to their friend and say, oh, we are not dating. We're just consistently seeing each other. I told them that I am dead inside. Is this the state of modern love? It doesn't have to be. As a relationship coach, I meet people all the time who are sick and tired of the Hollywood version of things. You meet someone that you are deeply triggered by, you never go to therapy, and you somehow end up in a formidable relationship. The truth is, we haven't really been modeled what a secure love is, not a lot of us anyway. And so it's this concept that's hard to grasp. It's not really talked about enough, maybe. And so instead, we rely on generic, oversimplified sayings to be our North Stars when feeling our way through relationships. You've probably heard of these sayings all the time. If they wanted to, they would. They're just not that into you. Right person, wrong time. It'll happen when you least expect it. Or my personal favorite, when you know, you just know, you know? <laughs> what we actually get to know in these relationships is that we need to know how to navigate. People will tell you that there are rules to love and dating, that all you have to do is jump over a few hoops 
act right, do things by the book, and then you'll be chosen. And it's these concepts that further push us into relationships where we're constantly trying to be validated all of the time. We have to say the right thing at the perfect time so no one gets upset. And we just end up realizing that we're just complicated, messy, and sometimes unpredictable. But there is something that I think the movies and books and TV do get right. And it's those final moments at the end when the characters are finally making their last ditch effort to win the person over or make things right again. And it's when they're finally being expressive, honest, and fair, and talking about their insecurities out loud, and they're doing it while shaking, breathing heavy, in a long, awkward monologue, kind of like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and it's these moments that I like to call the golden moments, when you finally give yourself the opportunity to open the door to relationships that are fulfilling, meaningful, and fun. Where meaningful doesn't mean curated, fulfilling doesn't mean pain-free, and fun doesn't mean less serious. I know that this is the path because I used to be anxiously attached too. Now, I like to say that I'm secure with an anxious lean because my anxiety will never fully go away. But that's not the goal. The goal is to not lead with it every single time. I do still like to joke though that I have a long history of loving, knowing, and feeling victimized by avoidance. Who else here also feels that way? <laughs> but the difference is now I can spot that avoidant behavior quickly, hold them accountable for their hurtful actions, and see the gifts that they actually bring into my life. My grandfather, for example, was an incredibly avoidant man, the most avoidant person I've ever not known. We did not have a relationship at all. He loved his books more than anything or anyone else. He did give me one of the best gifts that I've ever received. My unique and mythical name, Sabelle. My avoidant ex also gave me a pretty cool gift and I'm not being sarcastic here at all. He gave me the chance to live out my romantic Hollywood ending. Picture this. He took a long flight, surprised me at my door in a navy blue suit, holding flowers, and told me, you're it. Spoiler alert, this was not our one-way ticket to happily ever after. If anything, when we did work on our communication and it did improve, I still didn't feel seen or heard by him, and I felt totally hopeless. And it was then that I knew that I needed to take things into my own hands. So for the first time ever, what feels like the first time ever, I decided to really be curious about what it is I wanted to feel, do, and experience in my relationships. I remember Googling list of values, circling the ones that stood out, and trying to pinpoint why they matter to me so much. And the results kind of blew my mind. Baby steps. I also did other things like I acknowledged my red flags in relationships. I gave myself grace for all of the times that I did the cringiest things for love. But more importantly, I had to let go of the story, the love story that I wanted, where he writes me 365 letters, one a day for every day that I'm not near him. I had to finally let go of the idea that my relationships may not be as exciting, people may not talk about them or want to watch them, but they're my love stories now and they're so worth pursuing. Thank you.